students uh, today we are going to study pharmacology of uh, clopidogrel clopidogrel is an antiplatelet and thus an antithrombotic drug it inhibits platelet aggregation and uh, thereby it inhibits arterial thrombosis now one very important thing to note that uh, platelets uh, they are the main constituent of thrombus in arteries now in order to understand mechanism of action of clopidogrel let's uh, recapitulate physiology of platelet aggregation now this is a slide that explains physiology of platelet aggregation now in this slide i have shown here this is the tunica intima uh, which is made up of endothelium that is endothelial cells uh, these red color endothelial cells and platelets these are the blue colored platelets which are found circulating in the blood now uh, prostacyclin that is pgi2 and nitric oxide uh, these both are very strong inhibitors of platelet aggregation and uh, they also prevent activation of platelets uh, now these prostacyclin and nitric oxide they are synthesized by the endothelium and released in the blood now whenever there is damage to the endothelium now because of the damage to the endothelium there is fall in the synthesis of prostacyclin there is fall in the synthesis of nitric oxide because of which the platelets they become activated and apart from this due to the damage to the endothelium the subendothelial collagen is exposed so these are the blue colored fibers i have shown in the diagram this is the collagen now the damaged endothelial cells they release von willebrand factor now this von willebrand factor uh, it binds to the collagen and further uh, the activated platelets they bind to the von willebrand factor through the gp 1b receptors so these gp 1b receptors they are found located on the surface of the platelets and the platelets they bind to von willebrand factor through these receptors now this i have shown clearly in this diagram this is the diagram uh, this is the collagen uh, von willebrand factor that is released by the uh, damaged endothelium and this is the activated platelet which uh, binds to the uh, von willebrand factor through gp 1b receptor and this results in further activation of the activated platelets now these platelets they possess a receptor that is called as a gp 2b 3a receptor this receptor is also called as a fibrinogen receptor now activated platelet releases uh, mediators of platelet aggregation namely thromboxin a2 uh, adp that is the adenosine diphosphate and 5 hydroxy tryptamine uh, that is 5 ht or serotonin so these are the very strong or the very potent mediators of platelet aggregation and these all really these all are released by the activated platelet and further uh, these mediators uh, they activate gp2b3a receptors now these GP2B3A receptors, these are the fibrinogen receptors. That means these receptors, once activated, they bind to the fibrinogen. Now, fibrinogen further binds to the platelets. So, this uh, uh, diagram here, we can see that this is the activated platelet. Uh, there is activation of GP2B3A receptor, which binds to fibrinogen. Fibrinogen further binds to another platelet. Again, this gp 2 b 3A receptor it binds to the fibrinogen so there is formation of a platelet plug so all the platelets uh, they form a platelet plug uh, there is cross-linking of platelets and the fibrinogen here it functions like a glue so there is uh, formation of the platelet plug uh, which is very essential for the formation of clot and a clot that is formed inside a blood vessel is called as thrombus now this uh, uh, diagram uh, let's understand this diagram this is a diagram of an activated platelet and let's understand how the binding of adp to its receptor uh, is responsible for the platelet aggregation now when the adp binds to its uh, p2 y12 receptors which are present on the surface of activated platelet adp stimulates uh, g protein coupled receptors it stimulates g inhibitory proteins and it stimulates gq protein now let's first understand what happens when there is uh, stimulation of g inhibitory proteins now stimulation of g inhibitory uh, proteins um, that is the g inhibitory receptors inhibit adenyl cyclase and which reduces uh, synthesis of cyclic amp in the platelets now reduce cyclic amp uh, reduces the activation of protein kinase a now reduced protein kinase a causes reduced phosphorylation of wasp 
that is a vasodilator stimulated uh, phosphoprotein so there is reduced uh, phosphorylation of vasc now one thing very important to understand that uh, it's a vasc uh, that uh, stimulates the gp2b3 receptors while phosphorylated vasc is inactive so reduced phosphorylation reduced phosphorylation reduces phosphorylated vasc which is inactive but increases the level of active vasc an increase in the level of active vasc is responsible to uh, is responsible for the enhanced uh, gp2b 3a uh, receptor activation that is enhanced uh, gp2b 3a fibrinogen receptor mediated uh, cross linking of uh, platelets and platelet aggregation uh, now on the other hand activation of uh, g protein coupled gq pathway stimulates uh, phospholipase c now this phospholipase c it hydrolyzes pip2 that is a phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate it is a membrane uh, bound uh, protein so it causes hydrolysis of pip2 now this results in hydrolysis of pip2 results in the uh, production of diacylglycerol and ip3 that is inositol triphosphate now dag that is a diacylglycerol and ip3 they are uh, very potent secondary messengers now ip3 stimulates release of calcium from smooth endoplasmic reticulum now this calcium it degranulates uh, it causes the rupture of dense granules uh, which are present in the platelets and which causes further release of ADP and 5-HT. Now this ADP it further stimulates uh, P2Y12 receptors. Now apart from this it is a diacylglycerol which uh, stimulates a protein kinase C. Now stimulation of protein kinase C further stimulates uh, GP2B3A fibrinogen receptors and this again induces cross-linking uh, activation of this receptor induces cross-linking with other platelets through fibrinogen and uh, this diagram it clearly explains the immense or very high potential of uh, ADP in inducing the platelet aggregation uh, so clopidogrel it uh, blocks uh, it's uh, P2 vital receptors and it prevents uh, stimulation of uh, GP2B3 receptors and it also inhibits the release of uh, uh, proaggregatory ADP. Uh, it also inhibits the release of ADP which is responsible for platelet aggregation. So uh, mechanism of action of clopidogrel. Clopidogrel blocks uh, P2 Y12 uh, ADP receptors it inhibits ADP mediated activation of uh, key that is the final GP2B 3A receptor and uh, thus clopidogrel inhibits ADP as well as uh, fibrinogen induced platelet aggregation. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of clopidogrel. Uh, clopidogrel is a slow acting drug uh, thus the onset of action is 4 hours. Now since clopidogrel causes irreversible blockage of uh, platelet uh, P2Y12 receptor. Uh, the antiplatelet action of clopidogrel lasts for about uh, 5 to 7 days. Its elimination half life is uh, 7 to 8 hours and the dose of clopidogrel is uh, 75 milligram once daily. Now let's talk about the clinical uses. Now since clopidogrel inhibits uh, thrombosis in arteries, uh, it prevents uh, transient ischemic at attack, uh, it prevents stroke, and uh, by, uh, by inhibiting the formation of thrombus in uh, coronary blood vessels, it also inhibits uh, heart attack. Now, it is useful in uh, coronary, acute coronary syndrome like unstable angina, prevention of MI and uh, peripheral vascular diseases like intermittent claudication. And it also uh, reduces incidences of uh, restenosis after percutaneous coronary intervention. Now, main adverse effects of uh, clopidogrel are hemorrhage and uh, thrombocytopenia. 
so this is all about the pharmacology of propadogrel now if you find the video helpful kindly like subscribe and share this video you can ask your questions by writing in the comment section thanks for watching the video